Okay, well, thank you very much for that welcome, and um, thank you to Professor Das for a great presentation just now. Um, and congratulations to everyone working on NDL India. It looks like an amazing uh, resource, and I'm sure it's going to uh, help the lives of millions of, of Indians. Um, so congratulations on that. Um, so as you can probably tell from the way I'm dressed, I'm not an academic, uh, and I, I'm not even a librarian. So I'm, I'm a digital manager uh, and a digital product owner. Um, I work... Ooh, Where's my presentation gone? I work at the National Library of New Zealand, um, and I work in the um, yeah I work in the Digital New Zealand uh, unit there. Um, and you can see a couple of couple of URLs if you want to see any, uh, the work that we do. Um, I'm going to be talking to you as you all can also probably tell from the way I'm dressed about Supplejack. So Supplejack is our open source metadata aggregation and discovery tool. Um, I feel a little bit like a salesman here in my t-shirt and um, with my colleague from Boost in his t-shirt as well. Um, but I, it's open source, so I don't make any money from selling this product. But I do genuinely hope that it's something that can be of value. Uh, we have several other organisations around the world making use of Supplejack already. Uh, and we're really enthusiastic to um, improve the uptake and, and to co-develop uh, new features. Uh, first, I'll tell you a little bit about Digital New Zealand. So it was launched in 2008. Um, our mission is to find, share, and use uh, New Zealand digital content and, and share that with Kiwis in particular, New Zealanders. Um, we have uh, a website, but also we started with an API. So right back in 2008, uh, we understood that open access to the data was going to be really important, and we wanted to create a public RESTful API that could be consumed not, by, not only by our own uh, websites, but also um, by other organisations uh, around the world and New Zealand. Um, we, we're pretty small. Um, so we're quite pleased with having 200 content partners, but I know that's, um, that's nothing to the scale of some of the people here. Um, but we worked hard to get that. Um, yep, 30 million photos, audio, video, newspapers, more, uh, 10 million queries a month. Uh, and the whole thing, uh, as well as Digital New Zealand, powers the um, National Library of New Zealand uh, search. So this is our new National Library of New Zealand uh, website. We're still um, working on making it responsive, but you can see we've, we've done some work on the on the banner recently in the top navigation. Um, and that, and this, is the, this is the search aspect of the National Library website. Um, and, and this is powered by the Digital New Zealand API. Um, there's some, some nice uh, aerial photos of Wellington there, which is where I'm from, the capital of New Zealand. Um, some of our other API consumers, I've, I've got a, a small selection there. I think I've got uh, Europeana uh, in there. Yes, down on the right. If I can, where's the, that, that, yep. So there's some, Europeana has some content from uh, World War I in particular. Um, we've, uh, Seismic up here was started by the um, University of Canterbury uh, after the uh, earthquakes that uh, rocked Christchurch in 2010 and 2011. Um, and um, quite a few people were killed. Um, and they wanted to uh, create a place where they could bring media together related to, to that. And they used the Digital New Zealand API to, to provide that media. Um, there's, a, there's a World War I uh, 100 website, and th this is one of my favourites. This is a sort of collage website that pulls together imagery. I've, I've chosen to search on uh, rock climbing there, so there's some interesting images of people climbing mountains around New Zealand. Uh, and of course, this is the Digital New Zealand website, which we've just relaunched. This is version 3 of the website, I think. Um, and we're very pleased to have worked with uh, our vendor uh, partner, Boost, um, to create a great place to share... Uh, the wealth of New Zealand's content, um, and, and uh, one of the new features we've got, sorry, I'll just skip back, is um, the ability to create stories. So the Digital New Zealand website uh, pulls together all this content, um, all sorts of media, all sorts of text, um, from all these content partners around New Zealand, um, but we wanted to have, as well as a search and a way of finding that content, we want to have a way of people creating uh, something that's more personalised to them. Um, and so we use this, um, we use the stories concept uh, that allows people to uh, pick, pick and choose resources from our content partners, bring them together into one place and add their own uh, descriptive content around it and share that uh, with the world. Um, but I'm not going to go into that much today. Um, so here's, here's what our search page looks like. And in particular, I've chosen to search uh, on, oops, on the word, oh, bugger. how did I do that? <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. That's the one there. Uh, I've chosen to search on the word Supplejack. Uh, you might be interested uh, why we chose Supplejack as the name for this uh, open source metadata product. 
Uh, well, Supplejack is a vine which is um, local to, to New Zealand, um, and I think there are, there are cousins of it in Australia and across the world. Um, and it's, it's something that um, gets into everywhere. Um, and so that's the, the basis for Supplejack. We wanted something that was going to get into everywhere and make that content available for people to, to use. Um, and he, here's, a, here's another picture of Supplejack, but I'm, which leads me on nicely to our product. And here's our newly minted um, logo, which goes along with my newly minted T-shirt. So Supplejack is um, a metadata aggregation discovery and management tool. Um, it's open source, so it uses technologies like Ruby on Rails, uh, MongoDB, uh, Solar, uh, Sidekick, Redis, uh, etc. Um, it's available, you can see down there on the link, it's available uh, on GitHub, so you can download it and you can get some support there uh, for it. Um, we've got documentation, which is hosted on GitHub as well, uh, and there's a, a discussion forum here, which is Google Groups. Uh, you can go along and find more about it and ask questions there. Um, Last year, we were very pleased to win the uh, New Zealand Open Source Society Awards for the, the government category in open source. Um, and this, the whole uh, Supplejack underpins the Digital New Zealand API, which I'll, I'll show you a bit more. Um, so yeah, so our mission at Digital New Zealand is find, share, and use uh, New Zealand digital content. Um, so that's both born digital and um, content that has a digital representation, it's been digitized. Um, it's, this tool is, is quite customizable. Um, it has um, a custom metadata schema. It's very, you can be as permissive or as strict as you like. Um, our approach has been to be quite permissive with the standards um, of metadata that we expect from our content partners. Um, we know that a lot of smaller organizations find it difficult to uh, adhere to some of the metadata standards, so it's a very permissive uh, system, but it, it's able to be adapted. Um, we have a, a scripting system for harvesting the metadata, uh, which I'll go into in a little bit. Um, that uses a, um, a domain-specific language in, in Ruby, uh, so it's quite an accessible uh, technology. Um, and we can harvest sources from XML, OAI, RSS, HTML, sitemap, structured text, um, pretty much whatever you can throw at it. Uh, and then for the discovery side of things, we have obviously the API. Uh, we have some um, public endpoints for searching uh, for uh, accessing records and for the, the, the stories feature that I spoke about just before. Um, and the output formats were JSON, very popular, XML, RSS. Uh, and the other aspect to Supplejack is management. So um, this is one of the things that uh, we've, we've had some good feedback on from people who are using it in some jurisdictions in America in particular. Um, they really like that they, we've got a really nice UI, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it's quite easy to manage your harvesting process, uh, to develop your scripts, um, and to make things accessible. Uh, there's version control in, uh, of your harvest scripts in there. Uh, you can share the code. Uh, there's job scheduling. Uh, you can see jobs that, have, that are currently running, that have failed, etc. Um, it also manages multiple environments. So we have uh, just two environments that we operate. We have a staging environment where we do our initial harvest and we test uh, the content that's coming through. Uh, content partners can see that staging environment as well and see if they approve of what we're collecting. Uh, and we have a production environment, obviously. Um, some other features, there's some link checking, uh, and you can, you can manage some of the individual records and collections in it. So I'll show you a little bit about uh, how it looks. This is the Supplejack Manager tool. Um, I've, had to, I've had to blow it up a bit, so normally you'd get a wee bit more content and context on one screen, but um, uh, you'll see that I don't know why I chose the staging environment for this image. Um, so there's not a lot going on on harvesting jobs, but if I were to switch to the production environment, you'd see uh, a bit more action there. Um, and then also you can see we've got a lot of activity goes on with the parser scripts themselves. So those are the, the scripts for harvesting, ingesting metadata, um, who's been working on them, um, and when they were doing it. So you can talk to them if you're editing those things. Um, and down, down the bottom here, you'll start to see a list of, of jobs uh, to go out to our various content partners and collect new content overnight. Uh, the schema, as, as I said, is, is pretty adaptable. It uses this um, domain-specific language. Um, you can mix metadata standards pretty easily through namespaces. Um, it supports the field types, basically, that, that Mongo database, um, which is a, a big object data, uh, data store, document store. Um, and it has a few niceties, like you can alias your field names and you can create groups of fields to return back in your API. Um, so here's a, yeah, probably can't see that in any great detail, but this is a, an example of, of the schema that's set up for the Digital New Zealand website. 
um, you've got some names of some fields and uh, some options around filtering and whatnot. Um, do, uh, t I'm not quite sure of how much time I've got, so I'm going quite quickly, but tell me if I'm going a little bit fast or ask questions if you need to. Um, so harvesting is kind of the core of our system. I borrowed this, this slide from another presentation of ours. Um, basically, yeah, lots of, lots of websites, lots of data sources. Um, we can use flat files, etc. Uh, then we use our, our harvesting system with the parser instructions that bring it all into to Mongo, and we use um, the Apache Solar project as our search engine for, for indexing. Um, you may not be able to see this terribly well, but it's, it's basically pointing out that we can have uh, multiple, uh, well, this is one content partner, which is our sister organisation, Archives New Zealand, uh, that's responsible for uh, keeping government content. Um, they have at least a, a couple of different data sources. There's, there's their main one, which is an XML API, um, but they also have YouTube content. So we create different parts of scripts for each of these different collections. And then um, this diagram kind of shows that we can uh, share code snippets between those different parser scripts. So in, in this case, we've also got Tourism New Zealand, um, and they obviously have some similar uh, formatting in their, in their output, so we can, we can have shared code between those. Um, so here's a, a little look into the parser scripts themselves. So this is just a, a list of parser scripts that we have actively uh, working on. Now, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but it gives you a little... Um, a little insight into what it looks like to create a parser script for a particular content partner. Um, there's, there's some pretty, oops, sorry. There's some pretty simple um, field mapping in here using XPath uh, to get things like the link and the title and the description out of this. In this case, it's an RSS feed from a radio station. Um, and then you can create some more uh, complex, that's a you know, regular expression for mapping some data through um, to meet with our uh, metadata. Uh, and, of course, the other side of it is um, discovery. So it's not much good harvesting all this data if you, thank you, if you can't make it available to people. So um, our, the public search um, for this, this example is for Digital New Zealand itself. Um, it has a search capability. You can retrieve records and you can create uh, stories and sets. Um, but uh, privately, there's also uh, metrics on who's using uh, the API and how much data is uh, being pumped through. Uh, you can manage user accounts, um, key management. We can throttle uh, how much different users are um, using our system. Um, and the API itself is, is RESTful. There are you know, many different parameters you can use for your searches. It's faceted, uh, and it supports um, three output formats I think I mentioned before. So, so there's, a, there's a very basic example of a text search for Supplejet using our API. And uh, this slide is probably going to be a bit difficult to see, but there's an example of a few of the sorts of uh, fields that you can pass through, um, including a geo-bounding box if you want to just get data back from a particular region. Uh, there's facets, and you, of course you can paginate it and you can uh, create boole Boolean searches and that sort of thing. Um, and there's an, example of a, there's an example of the API output. Uh, this is a, some JSON response, um, and I think this item here is, is the last supple gaps shide that I showed of that vine creeping through the New Zealand bush. Uh, so job scheduling, um, this, this is um, one of the best features, I think, for Supplejack. You uh, don't need uh, technical staff or programmers to manage the ongoing harvesting process. Um, we have you know, a pretty nice UI here that lets you switch between different environments. This is a staging environment, and, and here's a series of uh, recurrent uh, harvesting processes are going on. It tells you how often they're, they're running. Um, and what sort of mode they're, whether they're incrementally adding to the data or whether they have to do a full and flush, so dropping the data and recreating it every time. Um, all right, so here's a set of, of finished production jobs, um, but you'll notice also we, we can um, talk about active jobs that are ongoing at the moment. These are uh, failed and, and stopped jobs, so I've got an example of a failed job there, and it gives you a bit of, a bit of information about why the job failed, so 404 not found on that site. Uh, New Zealand Forestry Service. I think their website must have been down uh, that day when we were running that. Uh, it's pretty easy to set up new schedules. You can set up a, a simple schedule here, or you can use uh, cron, you know, Unix cron syntax to set up your schedule as well. Uh, so just very briefly, I think I'm going to keep to time quite well, so that's good. Um, just a, a few other features. Uh, you can also, after we've done the harvesting, we can also create um, enrichment scripts. Uh, I won't go into what this one's doing, but basically once it's harvested the metadata, it can go out to some of the APIs uh, and some of the uh, URLs it might have found in that metadata and, 
collect and, and uh, create new uh, fields within that. Uh, and we also run link checking over, the, over our partner's content as well because we don't want to be surfacing a lot of content with mm, broken images and uh, links not available on this particular day. So uh, this is all down to a lot of hard work that's mostly not mine. I've only been with the National Library for about the last year. So I just wanted to, to very briefly think this is the um, very uh, handsome Digital New Zealand team. Um, and also Boost, who are our, our vendor partners, and we've worked very closely with them over the last uh, eight to ten years um, to, to have an ongoing, a really good ongoing relationship and development there. And you can see they're all proudly wearing their Supplejack t-shirts the day they got them. And that's that. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Can we have... A small memento. Thank you.